Hello everyone, it is Friday, April 23rd, 2021. Of course, Wednesday was New Comic Book Day, which means right now it's time for the new comic book video. Unfortunately, I didn't have an opportunity to do a video until today, and it is very early on Friday morning, so that's why you see a lot of light coming in through the windows, but I wanted to get this done. Pretty good week for books. Uh, some really nice titles came out, so we're going to jump right into it. And then, of course, uh, like the title stated, CGC has made another announcement as it relates to their fees. So we thought we would touch base on that a little bit and discuss that. And then I'll just show some uh, older books randomly of items that I am rebagging boarding with Mylar. Because uh, I do get a lot of questions about, you know, my process and how it looks. So I've done that a couple of times, but I just continue to get more requests to show it. So there's that. Let's jump right into the books. Uh, this was a book that came out last week, but they didn't get all the covers. And so this is Home. Uh, this is the cover A version right here. I read the story. I liked it. We'll kind of see where they take it. Cover purchase only. If you know the movie, you know what that is right there. Pulp Fiction. So when I saw this, I just grabbed it because I do like the movie Homage uh, covers. They've been coming out with uh, some pretty decent ones, so I'll always try to grab those if it's a movie that I enjoy. Uh, issue number three, Maniac of New York. Losing a little interest in this storyline. Uh, I'm just not really getting into it. I do like the character, but the story just isn't doing a whole lot for me, so there's that. Maniac of New York number three. And again, this is in no particular order. These are just randomly put out there, so... Uh, this is another one that I was looking forward to, and I read this one. The artwork is just black and white, real simple, uh, nothing real fancy, but just kind of a good story, so I am looking forward to the next one. This is from uh, Beh uh, Behemoth Comics. This is You Promised Me Darkness. There's a cover here. And again, I have other covers coming up on this, so I'll just show it to you randomly. I didn't separate the books or anything because, again, I've had a lot going on this week. Uh, the Old Guard, number three, or excuse me, number one of six uh, from Image. Is that right there? Kind of a cool cover. We'll see where they go with that. You know, <clears throat> I had a lot of high hopes for this storyline. This is Ha Ha from Image. This is issue number four. We've talked about this book. The first two issues were really, really good. The last two issues are really, really bad, in my opinion. This was more of a it ripoff uh, for it. So again, uh, issue one was really good. Issue two was really good. And I had, you know, just really high hopes. It was one of my picks uh, for people. Uh, but again, issues three and four aren't doing a whole lot for me. So hopefully uh, they kind of get back to the basics of what it was for the first two issues and get this story back online. And then uh, this is cover B of Ha Ha number four. Uh, Nightwing number 79, book that was selling really good, sold out in most places. Uh, people grabbing this up. This is, of course, DC. Lila Star from Boom Studios number one, The Many Deaths of Lila Star. This is a foil cover right here. It's the only one I grabbed. Kind of a cool cover right there, so I picked that up. Did not read the story on that yet, but I will. Uh, really cool uh, Catwoman B cover. Selling really, really well right there. This is uh, Catwoman number 30. Really cool cover right there. <clears throat> this is another one, You Promised Me Darkness. This is what they called the nude variant on that right there. There's that. This is Geiger number one, second print. The first print, of course, uh, you know, sold really, really well. This is the second print. It is a glow-in-the-dark. You can kind of see right in the face here. And it makes a skeleton face. I put it under the light for a while. Uh, turned off the lights. Really, really cool glow-in-the-dark on that right there. So I picked that one up. And surprisingly, shops didn't buy a whole lot of that one. Especially as well as the first one sold. So and that's going to be pretty cool with the glow-in-the-dark. <clears throat> Story I really am enjoying from Image. Stray Dogs number three. Really, really good storyline. All three stories have been really good. This one kind of had a sad ending, if the ending is what you think it is, uh, on this particular story for the uh, you know issue number three. So there's that cover there. And then they come out with a uh, poor genre cover. And this was the Stray Dogs number three. Then another copy of You Promised Me Darkness. 
different cover there. I think there were like six or seven different covers. I was able to get a couple of covers uh, because a lot of the books had come in damaged. And so the covers weren't really, uh, you know, all that great condition as I prefer my books to be in a higher condition. And then the hot book, which kind of flew under the radar. A lot of shops didn't know this was happening. Uh, but when it was found out that this is what was going on, uh, the shops, the books were just blowing off the shelves. This is uh, Batman, Zero Point. It's the Fortnite storyline. And of course, if you play Fortnite, which I do not, there is apparently codes in the book. This is a sealed book. It's a polybagged book. There are codes in there where you can get stuff in the game. I don't know, uniforms or clothing or stuff like that. So these were selling really, really well. I was able to pick up one of those. I feel like I collect the Batman stuff. So I got that. Again, I am not a Fortnite type of person. Now, <clears throat> if you've been watching the last week, the big news in uh, the comic book community is CGC raising their prices uh, you know, as, as it relates to their grading standards. And I know this is a big deal uh, to a lot of people. The big One of the big things was if you have a account as a retailer, a retailer account uh, with a shop where you submit a lot of books, your discount went from 20% to 15%. Now, the difference on the books was not a huge price difference. It was, you know, sometimes three, four dollars a book. But when you have shops that are putting in four or five hundred books a month, you're talking a couple of thousand dollars. Now, the thing that I didn't like and I thought was really funny was that CGC released this great thing saying that due to the overwhelming demand for their professional grading and unbiased grading, uh, they have had to hire additional staff and buy a larger uh, workspace, a larger warehouse space in order to take in all their orders. Now, they, apparently they've hired 70 people, uh, which if you think about it, doesn't seem like a whole hell of a lot for all the books that get sent in to be graded. And they're also doing uh, hobby cards and Pokemon cards as well. So when you look at 70 people, it's not a lot. Now, what do you get for that extra money? You get nothing for the extra money. They were talking about having to get their new staff members trained up to the standards of CGC. Well, if you're spending money to get books graded, why do you need to train them up? You should be hiring people that already have a basic understanding and know how to grade books because you got these new people coming in. They're trying to rush through these grades. There was a, a video that was released a while back talking about, you know, how CGC, and this is from someone who was grading from CGC, which was, you know what? They only take a very short time, 20, 25 seconds on a modern book. They just basically look at the covers, the back, the front, don't really go in depth with that. That's not what I want. Now, of course, you're going to try to do uh, a more detailed grading as it relates to either high key books or vintage books, golden age books, pre-code, things like that. But again, the grading standards are really, really poor. And if you're bringing in all these new employees to try to help catch up with all the backlog orders that you have, you're not hiring people that are qualified to grade books. You're hiring people that have a basic understanding. But if somebody is out there paying for this service, if I'm paying for a service and you're supposed to be the, you know, the peak of the, you know, the, the, the standard that everybody tries to reach, um, I don't want to be told, well, you know, he's new, so it's going to take him a few months to get, get the hang of, you know, properly grading books. A lot of bright, a lot of cases are breaking when they're coming in. They're cracked cases. They're just having a lot of issues. CGC has really taken a large hit. Now, that doesn't break my heart. There is no secret about my disdain for CGC. Uh, because of what they've done to the industry. I think they've hurt it more than they've helped it because the amount of greed that goes on in this industry is just out of control. Uh, you can look at it as the peak of cards. There are people who sit outside targets trying to get the you know packs of cards that go on the hanger boxes and they'll sit there overnight just in order to buy a couple of you know packs of cards. When does it stop? When does this madness end? And when do people get back to, you know what, collecting because they love to collect. And if you want to make a little money on the side, go ahead and do that. But don't manipulate the market. When you talk about manipulating the market, one of the really good things there is Berserker from Boom Studios, the Keanu Reeves, uh, you know, esque book uh, that's already been picked up for television or a movie. Now, Boom Studios really got the, the market frenzy going. So what you have is you have them next week, which is the hot book which is going to be the Something is Killing the Children 8th print. 
And there's like, you have to buy this particular book to get it. You have to turn in this card and do that. And we're going to send free books. Now, there are shops already talking about, they're not going to give the book out for free. And they're like, why should I give you a free book if they're selling online for $49? If you want the book and you want the eighth print, you're going to pay fair market value. Now, is that fair to people who buy books, who've been buying something that's killing the children? I'm not talking about people who are flipping books. I am talking about the guy who has been buying since day one. I've been buying something that's killing the children since day one. And I'm not concerned about it because I already have my copies of 8th print coming in. I'm already going to get those. This is for the people who might not necessarily want to flip the book, but are going to try to you know fight for it. Now, we know what those multiple print runs of something that's killing the children is going to do. The 8th print that's coming out isn't going to be as limited as people think, and it's not going to hold its value like people think. The, the holy grail for that book as it relates to print runs, I believe, and still believe, is the six print number one for something that's killing the children. But is it fair for shops to get free books from a company as part of a, you know, a perk for buying a Berserker number two and having the card to get the eighth print? And should the shops be able to sell those for $49? Because right now the going price online is between 40 and 50 bucks. So I've heard some shops say they're going to do that. I don't agree with that. And shame on you for doing that if you're supposed to give the books away. And who should get those books? I'll be honest with you. The people who should get those books, if you have box customers, and this box customer has been buying something that's killing the children every week consistently forever, that's the person who should get the first opportunity to get a copy of the eighth print. That's just my view on that. I'd like to hear your view on that as well. So there was just kind of a little CGC thing. I mean, right now, as we're going, going back to the grading with CGC, their modern tier, uh, they say, is 53 days, uh, 53 days, uh, business, business days. So you take away weekends, and you can probably add 40 days to that. So you're close to 100 business days, which is a long time. And CBCS isn't much better. Right now, their turnaround times are four to six weeks. Now, uh, the new modern price to get a book with a maximum $400 value from CGC is $22. Uh, the same service from CBCS is $18 with a maximum value of $250. And again, they're four to six weeks. So at least CBCS says we're going to be at this time frame. You know, CGC is telling you if you pay for the service, you're going to get it back in 53 days. And then, you know, seven months later, when you're still waiting for your books, they tell you, well, we're just backed up on that. So, um, again, CGC changing a lot of things. Some people are unhappy. It's like PSA with the card grading. PSA has actually shut down their submissions for a couple of months just to try to get caught up. CGC is going to do the same thing with their cards. Uh, they're changing everything. I just think it's bad. I think the industry is going into a very dangerous, dangerous area. So there was that. So just kind of a real quick eh, CGC thing, which people like. Now, I have been getting a lot of questions, and I always get questions. Even when I show things, I get questions as it relates to my Mylar and the painter's tape that I use. Um, I got one of these little painter tape holders from a friend of mine, Rudy. Makes it a lot easier to, you know, <laughs> just pull the tape and do it. Uh, instead of having to sit there and cut the painter's tape by hand. So thank you, Rudy, for that. And then I'll show you just a few books. I don't know if I've shown some of these things, but if I did, I apologize. And if I didn't, you'll enjoy it. Uh, so this is right here from 1971. This is uh, House of Mystery number 195, Bernie Wrightson cover. There's that right there. Beautiful book. Anything Bernie Wrightson is a, is a hit. And all I do is I just kind of put the notes on the back of what it is, who the artist is, things like that. So next up, uh, 1968, Neil Adams. This is a Superboy, Superboy number 152. And again, these are just books on rebag and boarding, putting the painter's tape on the back, updating the, the information. Lois Lane bondage cover right here, 1969. This is Lois Lane number 96. And no, this is not an air with the, no, nothing in the bubbles. So there's that, but there you go, a little... You know, bondage cover on that. Again, those sell really, really well. Uh, another bondage cover, Jungle Jim. This is from 1969. This is a much better graded book right here. There's that. Of course, someone's going to sit there and say it's a bad depiction of African Americans on the cover because everybody complains about everything right now instead of just taking it for what it is. There's that. 
First Appearance of the Ox, Daredevil 15. I think I have shown this book before. I have different copies of this book. This is a lower grade version, 3.5, but still presents very, very nicely. And again, like we've discussed in the past, if a book presents very nice, that's all that matters. And I just put the information back there. Of course, it's a Ramita cover as well. So you get a first print and a Ramita. Kind of a incredible Hulk right here, uh, number 130. And this is from 1970, Herb Trimpey cover on that. Again, information, just the painter's tape, comes off really, really easy. Leaves no residue, which is very important. And then if I do a larger book, which is basically something that has uh, worth a lot more money on that, uh, like this 1968, this is a Kirby cover in art. This is Thor 156. Just comes out really good. And again, the difference is you have more space on it right there. Uh, you get a little bit more space, spacing between your, your book and the cover. 1967, Year I Was Born. Kirby cover and art right there. A little hella action on that. This is Thor 150. Lower grade, uh, VG Plus 4.5. But again, my grading is a hell of a lot different than a lot of people's grading. <clears throat> Famous Wonder Woman cover right here. Wonder Woman number 199, bondage cover. Again, mid-grade on this right here, but it is a classic bondage cover. And again, same thing, painter's tape on the back. And if you look at it, you can just kind of, you know, if you look at the painter's tape, like I said, it just comes off real easy like that. And you can just put it right back on. No residue, no fuss, no muss. Classic, uh, classic Kirby cover here on this. This is from 1968. This is Thor 154. Uh, first appearance of Mangog. Nothing real big on that, but just kind of a cool cover. And that's classic Kirby right there. He's just kind of come busting out of the screen. And then I will show you a couple more books. And that'll be it for this video. This, of course, from 1971. Famous Neil Adams cover. And a, new, and a Bernie Wrightson story. This is Batman number 237. First appearance of the Reaper. This is a lower grade version of this book. This is a 2.5 what I graded it. But it presents again... Another book that presents really, really nice because Mylar will make everything. And again, when I do books like this with the bigger, it's halfback. This is regular Silver Age boards, and that's the halfback. You can kind of see the extra spacing on the side. Makes it look really, really nice. <clears throat> High grade Doom Patrol number 89, 8.0 from 1964. Really nice color on that. Yellow just really pops out. Commandy number 7. Uh, another high-grade book, 9.0 from 1973, Kirby cover and art. Something about Commandy doesn't get a lot of credit, I don't think. I, these are very affordable books in high grade, and I think ultimately this book is just going to continue to go up. So you can find these. Again, these are real easy to find in high grade. It's one of those storylines that just seems to, you know, get real easy on there. Uh, next up, from 1971, this is Fear number 3. This is uh, Kirby and Ditko cover in art. Can't go wrong with that. Just classic monster fight right there. And the last book we're going to show right here. This is the third cameo appearance of him. This is a Kirby cover and art. This is Thor number 164. Uh, upper grade, 7.0, kind of mid-high, you know, upper mid grade right there, 7.0. Really, really nice book right there. And then this one here was just a mid-grade 6.0 on that one. So there was that. So those are the books that I'm going to show today. Um, I am going to try to do, like I said, I'm working on a lot of different books. Now, some of you enjoy seeing the older books. And, you know, I have so many copies of things that sometimes I just forget what I show. So uh, if you like seeing these older books, leave a comment in the, you know, leave a comment and say, yeah, keep them coming. And I'll just keep them coming. So there was that. Again, I appreciate all the support I get on this channel. I appreciate all the comments, all the positive feedback. Um, again, it was a couple of tough couple of weeks for me, but I'm hoping that the you know the videos you find enjoyable. Uh, if you're a subscriber, thank you very much. If you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell so you know when I have new videos coming out. So that's all we have. So as always, I hope you like the video. But if not, nothing I can do for you. Have a great, great day and happy hunting.